Today is going to be another rebuild. We're gonna be focusing on the high contact players. So low power, but really high contact. Speed and stuff doesn't really matter, but my only two stipulations for this video are I can only use players that have really high contact and low power. It's gonna be interesting to see how they do in a sim style franchise. And I'm kind of, I'm, I'm actually interested to see how it goes. So if you guys are still wondering which roster I use, you guys gotta check out my last video. It was the glitchy players rebuild. And I say in that video, what roster I do use. It's in the top right hand corner. And let's talk about the sponsor for today's video, SeatGeek. If you guys are looking for tickets for MLB games with the season winding down, NBA, any sporting event, even concert tickets, and you guys want a discount at checkout, use Ant Ortiz and get yourself $20 off your tickets. I think that's a pretty good deal. So. With that being said, let's hop into today's video, the high contact rebuild. Alrighty, so let's take a look at the roster for today's video. Obviously pitching is gonna be the normal twins pitching. I really wasn't too, too worried about pitching and their contact stats and things like that. But this is where I'm more focused on the lineup. We're looking at the high contact players. So our DH slash second baseman slash third baseman is Whit Merrifield. You guys can see low power, high contact. Looking forward to seeing how that goes. Endy and Ciarte is another one of those players. All right, we got Daniel Murphy, who's kind of the lowest power, high contact first baseman I could find. Yuli Gurriel is another option, but we're going to go with Daniel Murphy, see how it goes. Ben Zobrist is our option at second base, or kind of a platoon player for us. We got Jeff McNeil, who's going to be playing left field for us. Obviously, another kind of that platoon, stick him anywhere we need him, utility player. Elvis Andrews is our shortstop. There was another option I could have gone with in Gene Segura. Um... So that was an option I could have done uh, for catcher. I went Omar Narvaez. Another one of the options I could have gone with is Buster Posey, but I was still kind of thinking about, can I afford to put him in the team, especially with our budget? I wasn't too sure, especially since Minnesota isn't like the, the biggest, like the wealthiest team where we could afford to spend a lot of money. Adam Eaton's gonna be kind of an outfield player for us again high contact and then we got matt duffy who's kind of a infielder that we can get involved we also have d gordon albert almora jr ronald torres and then williams astudio so ronald torres obviously not a superstar or anything but look at that look at that contact number looks to be pretty good so this is kind of the team i'm also thinking about maybe just letting adam meet and sit um he becomes a free agent this year and i'd rather let um, Almora Jr. kind of develop. I feel like that might help us out just a little bit, but for the most part, I'm really liking the team. I'm kind of excited to see how things go. And uh, for season one, I think it's pretty straightforward. Let's just test it out. There obviously are other players we could use with high contact. So if some players don't do well, we can always trade them and stuff like that. But that's the team. I think it's kind of cool to see if a high contact team can win a World Series, maybe even make it to the playoffs. So with that being said, I'll see you guys at the end of the season. Alrighty, so season one, we made the postseason. So I guess maybe these hitters are kind of glitchy. When you take a look at our record, 88 and 74. So not the best. We obviously are a wild card team. But uh, league leaders wise, I'm assuming batting average is going to be pretty high. And I'm assuming we're going to have a couple guys up there in the hits. Merrifield's up there. And Ben Zobris up there. And then batting average, we had a couple players. McNeil, Zobris. Uh, Omar Narvaez as well. So we definitely have some players that are hitting the ball pretty well. Awards wise, a silver slugger for Jeff McNeil. George Springer was uh, the MVP, one of those glitchy players I mentioned. And same with Bryce Harper. And then you got Strasburg and Garrett Cole winning the Cy Young. So let's take a look at the standings, see how things went. We obviously were 16 games behind the Indians. They kind of just ran away with everything. And we're the 18th ranked team. We obviously have first in contact. You can't see it because I'm covering it up but you, just trust me we're first in contact everything else is pretty low so i guess we could take a look at the wild card yeah we were it was a pretty comfortable even the orioles the orioles are pretty close up there who would have thought who would have thought so pitching wise we're definitely going to need to improve this aspect of our team i have a feeling like this kind of held us back quite a bit not a single pitcher had a under four era even in the bullpen besides trevor may it's looking like we definitely need to improve that bullpen. Taylor Rogers and Trevor May were like our two best pitchers. So when we look at our bench, pretty good averages across the board. 300 for every single player on the bench. And then when we look at our starting lineups, you guys can see everyone's close to 300. This is crazy. This is like the best average team I've ever seen. Ever. Like that I've ever had. So you guys can see everybody's putting up really high averages. And... Um, 
I'll take that. I mean, not a lot of home runs. I think our, our league leader, or our team leader was 24, and that was our catcher, Omar Narvaez. But, I mean, almost, it's just crazy. 350 on base percentage. We got 360, Daniel Murphy, 341, Ben Zobrist, 400, Jeff McNeil, 386, Elvis Andrews, 344, Narvaez, 381, Albert Almora Jr., 356, and then Matt Duffy, 367. So it's crazy to think that our lowest average was, what, 275? I think that's a pretty good indication of what this team is capable of doing. Obviously, pitching, we're definitely going to need to improve that. But for the most part, our team's kind of glitchy. We got some really high contact guys that are working pretty well with the offense. Let's take on this Rays team at Tropicana. Um, I have a feeling Barrios is probably our best bet. So let's get into it. All right, here we go. A double. We get a run thanks to Daniel Murphy. Another run. I have a feeling we put up a lot of runs. I just have a feeling... Our pitching lets us down so couldn't score that that inning but we're still up to nothing base is loaded for Narvaez Matt Duffy brings in a couple so we're up for nothing and maybe this is the way to go maybe the contact team is that glitchy team that you just need to have because so far we got 12 hits like that's nuts we're out we don't have the pop or anything but things are still going pretty good Jose Barrios is pitching a gem. We're probably going to take him out just because he was a little tired. And we'll just go to uh, Trevor May here. And uh, that's the game. I'll, I'll take that. We're taking on the Astros. It's going to be a tough game. But Jose Barrios, for a pitcher who kind of struggled throughout the year, did pretty good. So we're going to take him. We're going to move him into this spot. And we'll go like that for this matchup against the Astros. So game one, we lost 2-3. to three. We lost 4-11. to 11. So if we lose this game... It's it's uh, season over for us. So Jose Barrios on the mound again. Couldn't ask for a better situation. And that's not a good start. So maybe our maybe our magic's running out. We're taking on Justin Verlander. So it is going to be a really tough game. It really is. Um, but Narvaez ties up the game for us. Could have scored there with runners at second and third and two outs. But wasn't able to capitalize. So 1-1. Narvaez two home runs this game. Are you kidding me? So, one run does score. We do lose the lead. But, I mean, we're putting up a good game. Jose Brios is done after that inning. So, it's through six. Three runs allowed. Narvaez is three for three with three home runs. Are you serious? You, you got to be kidding me. Um, that's just unreal. Duffy. Merrifield. Okay. Let's come on. Let's do something here. Any, any type of hits are like what we need right now. Bases loaded for Narvaez. He's had a good game. And of course, right there, he strikes out. <sighs> All right, we're going to take him out. We're going to go to our lefty and Taylor Rogers. Double play. Perfect. Can we win it here? No, we can't. We're going to let Taylor Rogers go again. And that's the ball game, most likely. Probably should have went to the righty, but I felt I felt good there. I felt like we had it. Come on. Uh, no, Narvaez was hot for the whole game and ends it with two outs in his last two at-bats. But that's okay. Kind of a glitchy team so far. Kind of a glitchy team so far. I think if we definitely improve this this pitching this pitching staff that we had I, or have, I think we're set. The Indians win the World Series. Let's get into this offseason. All right, no one retired from us as expected. I didn't think anybody would. Exclusive negotiations. How did Odorizzi do? Pretty poorly, so I'm not too sure about him. Um, Adam Eaton, he wants to be an everyday player, but I don't know if he's going to be. Is he still going to want to be an everyday player? We can't, we can't give him that. Ben Zobrist is still kind of a glitch. Um, we'll give him platoon and I think one more season we should be fine. Kyle Gibson, not too set on. Martin Perez, as a five starter, he kind of fits that mold. We'll give him a shot and then we'll let those two guys go. And we'll keep moving forward. So let's see what we can do in free agency and stuff. Arbitration. Yeah, we'll give everybody arbitration. And then looking at free agents. Oh, actually, contracts. Everybody's going to get a contract. And free agency will definitely try to improve this pitching staff. So like I said, season two, the, the focus was really trying to stock that bullpen. Really trying to improve that starting rotation. So that we could really see what this offensive like hitting team can do. 
Can this contact team win us some playoffs? Can a contact team win us a World Series? So let's take a look and see how we improve this team. So pitching, we went out and got Ryu. We got Barrios. Fernando Romero is still here. Martin Perez is still here. And we picked up Jeremy Hellickson, who actually had himself a really good season last year. We also added Jeremy Jeffers and then Steve Ciszek as some bullpen options. So it looks like our team doesn't look too terrible. Lineup wise, not much has changed here. Really the only change that we did was we're gonna let Luis Arias hit. I mean, his contact numbers aren't that great, but we don't really have any other options. I mean, I checked to see free agency and I thought about maybe going out and get Gene Segura or things like that, but there really weren't too many high contact low power guys i mean maybe david freeze is an option but um outside of that as you guys can kind of see there really aren't too many that we could go for i mean eric sogard probably should have a little bit better contact maybe uh adrianza who used to play for the twins we let him go um we could go eduardo nunez but realistically there really aren't too many other hitting options we could go with really the only other option that i did think about and let luis arias sit in triple a was Luri garcia we could do but i feel like we get him quite often um who else could we get uh, oh melky cabrera that's who it was it was melky cabrera good contact numbers and i thought about maybe we could bring him in for like a season see if he takes that um, he does. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll let Luis Arias go back into the minors and we'll let Milk and Melky Cabrera, the milkman, come up for a season. It looks like the offense has that potential. It's just can that pitching staff hold it, hold us into some games that, you know, kind of let us down last year. So let's see how season two plays out. Alrighty, so again, we're a postseason team and it's looking like maybe that pitching changes that we did to improve the team worked out. Because when you look at it, we're 95 and 67. We're taking on the Red Sox as a wild card team. So it's looking like we're in a we're in a, a tough division this time. Looking at our standings, we missed out by one game, which is a little disappointing. And when you look at the wild card, we won the first place spot and we had some room to play with um since the next closest one with 91 wins so so far it's looking like our team's improving we're ranked 19th obviously contact is still first pitching is ninth and everything else is kind of last in this in the standings worst defense worst speed and worst power almost so we did have a couple league leaders ender inciarte had the most doubles ben zobers had the best batting average and inciarte had the most hits and then when you look at awards Silver Slugger for Ben Zobrist. MVP was JD Martinez and Reese Hoskins. Okay. And then Max Scherzer won Cy Young along with Chris Sale. So interesting stuff. Let's take a look and see how our pitching did. Um, under four ERA for Ryu. Not amazing, especially since he was one of our better pitchers, but um, these two guys, I need them to pitch a little bit better. Fernando Romero pitched pretty solid, better than our first two guys. Uh, Martin Perez, that's a, those are good numbers. I like to see that. And Jeremy Hellickson wasn't as good as I would have hoped. So he might be a player I look to replace. Tyler Duffy, fantastic in this long relief role. Gotta love it. Trevor May struggled a little bit. Probably a player I'll look to replace. Ryan Harper was good. Hildenberger was okay. Um, Jeremy Jeffers was really good. Taylor Rogers struggled a little bit in the setup role. And Steve Ciszek did as well. Hmm little disappointing little disappointing but now let's take a look at what we're all here for that high contact team so our bench wasn't as good as last year which is disappointing to see but you guys can kind of see everybody else um very high contact team and high average and i'm assuming high on base percentage no one was below a 275 this year so again really solid 14 home runs so that's not bad 28 for inciarte i'm sorry what what is this power surge that Inciarte is getting? 15 for McNeil, 17 for Narvaez. Okay. So our league leader was, N or not our league leader, our team leader was Inciarte. All righty. All right. So heading into this wild card game against the Red Sox, I think it's going to be a tough one for sure. Let's see how things go. We are the home team playing at Target Field. We have to go uh, Jose Barrios. Let's get into it. All right. All right. All right. So. Here we go. Hopefully it goes well. Um, their team looks the same just with Mabrus Valoria as their catcher and Justin Smoke as their new uh, DH or first baseman. First baseman. So not the best player to give a home run to. Valoria I know isn't the best of hitters. And now we're down 2 nothing. So things are looking a little iffy to start this game. Um, we don't have a hit. And we're down 4 nothing. We don't have a hit. 
What? He was so good last uh, wild card game, and now he's just getting absolutely pummeled. So maybe we do need a little bit better pitching staff. Maybe that's kind of our issue right now. Maybe, maybe in the clutch, we're really letting the, the offense down. But I mean, even when you look at the offense, we haven't been too great. Only four hits. Um, so let's see how things go here. Maybe a small comeback. No, not at all. Wow, we got destroyed. Absolutely destroyed. Not even going to look at the rest. Let's get into the offseason. Pirates, Pirates defeat the Astros. Hold on. All right, so nobody retired. And then let's just keep moving and see how this goes. Exclusive negotiations. Duffy's coming back for sure, but I think that might be it. Everybody else is aging a little bit too quickly. Um, let's give him a contract really quick. Um, let's do like a three-year deal. I think that's pretty cool. And then we'll move forward and see what we can do in free agency. Offering arbitration. We got to give it to everybody. And then contracts, we got to give one to everybody too. So let's see what we can do for season three, the final push. Alrighty, so for season three, what we're going to do is trade D Gordon, Alex Kirilov, and Gabriel Maciel for DJ LeMayhew. You guys can see he does have a little bit of power, but he's one of the better players available that has like the really high contact stats. So we're going to make that trade. Alrighty, Joan Duran, Jeremy Hellickson, and Jordan Belazovic are going to be traded for Mike Clevenger. We're going to strengthen that starting rotation a little bit more. Alrighty, Nick Gordon, Tyler Duffy, and Steven Gonzalez is going to make way for AJ Minter and Adam Eaton. We kind of need an extra bat. We're going to get one this way. Alrighty, so after all those trades, let's take a look for season three, what we can do with this team, because I have a feeling we, we've put together something pretty good here. So when you look at the pitching rotation, you guys can kind of see like, it looks really good. I mean, this is a really strong starting rotation. I mean, I don't see how you can't get pretty far with a lot, or at least a lot of wins with this team. Cole Stewart, one of the twins prospects is gonna come up and be our long reliever. His stats aren't too crazy, but I think with that home runs per nine and that decent hits per nine, we should be okay. We got Taylor Rogers, Trevor Hildenberger, Ryan Harper, AJ Minter, who obviously we just traded for, Jamie Jeffers. We signed Andrew Miller to a one-year deal in free agency, and then Steve Ciszek. So overall, I'm liking that pitching rotation. I think that could really carry us, especially with our high contact team. Whit Merrifield, Andrews, Jeff McNeil, obviously the addition of DJ LeMayhew. We've also added and Adam Eaton. And then the rest of the team is pretty much the same. We brought up Luis Arias, who again, not necessarily the craziest of contact, but it's better than what we could have had. And there really aren't too many other options in free agency. Um, yeah, I mean, when you kind of look at what's available, there's nothing really to be like, ooh, this guy's got really good contact. We should bring him in. There really aren't too many players. We could bring back Ben Zobris, but I feel like that would be kind of a waste because I have a feeling he's going to drop pretty far in uh, or drop quite a quite a bit in overall. So overall, this is the team we're looking at. I, I kind of like it. They're, like I was showing you, there's nobody in free agency, but it's a good team. Let's see how season three plays out. Obviously, this is the last year to try to make it past that first round of the playoffs. All right, it's the last chance to make it far in the playoffs. We won the division this time, so that actually does kind of help us out. So we were 96 and 66, so not too much like different or better in terms of record from what our previous seasons were. But we'll take a look. Uh, 13 games ahead of the Royals, and then we're ranked ninth with the best or the best contact still, fourth best pitching, and then the rest are still pretty low. So 96 wins, not terrible. League leaders, we had stolen bases and batting average as well as c-shack with the most saves and then when we look at awards we had a silver slugger but stanton was the mvp along with bryce harper so the phillies have been taking the cake for mvps recently and then carlos carrasco and luis severino were cy young so let's take a look let's take a look at our pitching rotation since this is what i felt like we've really improved on this year and from what i see kind of disappointed with these guys which were which is weird because romero and martin perez were kind of our stars in the rotation last year but now we have ryu and barrios who are one and two for sure cole stewart struggled a little bit um but um sam dyson was brought up that means one of our pit or one of our hitters was sent down but uh it looks like from minter down our bullpen was nutty like scary good lights out it, like that's what you want from your bullpen but this is where we're, we're looking to see okay so who got sent down i want to see that first it doesn't look like anybody it just looks like we had an extra spot available to bring up so looking at our averages elvis andrews was a little bit a little bit of a down year so maybe we uh bring somebody else up who had a good average like ender and Ciarte. jeff mcneil again 300 average he's just just a contact master. 
DJ LeMayhew, 333 average was key for us to bring him in. So 21 home runs for him. Andrews, we've already said 245. 288 for Almora Jr. I'm surprised he's not going up a lot more. He's actually had some pretty good seasons. And look at those double numbers in the 30s. Omar Narvaez, very solid. Again, home runs are pretty high. Good doubles this season. I like to see that. Duffy's been very consistent for us. And then Luis Arias was there as well. And then when you look at the rest of our bench, was actually pretty solid. It may not be the best, but it was still pretty consistent and actually pretty good for us so heading into this we're taking on the astros oh man this is gonna be a tough one but let's see if we can uh squeak out a chance you know into the alcs but um so we're down down again we're down to elimination at this point what can we do minute made we're gonna let we're gonna let romero go so let's get into this one all right here we go mcneil two run bomb and then lemay hugo in deep what is going on? Michael Brantley was actually a player I considered signing because of his high contact numbers, but he had a little bit too much power for my liking. But so far, so good. Um, and, and if we keep this up, we might be heading to game five, which would be really nice. Um, I, I was going to say, we need one more insurance run for me to feel safe. And there it is. We have a three run lead. Things are going pretty good. Um, Romero is pitching quite well as well, like two. So, oh, George Springer ties it up. Really? Um, Romero's done after seven, four to four ball game. I meant to take him out. Dang it. Um, let's go Jeffers. Come on. No, it comes down to this comes down to this. Can we do it? A ground out, a strikeout and a pop-up. Are you kidding me, man? Really? All right, guys, unfortunately, we just weren't able to do it. That sucks, man. Look, I mean, for a team that has really good contact, I'm I'm actually pretty impressed. It does help that we had a good pitching rotation as well. But for the most part, I put the success up to this high contact team. You, you're obviously going to get a lot of base runners. And in a sim style franchise, when you have a, a high on base percentage, high average, you're going to obviously score some runs. So to be honest, it's kind of a glitch. Maybe high contact players are the way to go in a sim style franchise. Sprinkle in a couple power bats here and there, maybe in that four, five, six spot. But if you build a team with high contact, maybe that's the glitchy way for sim style franchise. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Obviously, if you did, make sure you hit the like button down below. Subscribe if you're new and enjoy the content. And let me know in the comment section who are some of your glitchy players, your high contact players that you always turn to. Because I'm kind of liking this lineup. It looks like it's kind of a cheat code. So I hope you guys enjoyed it like I've already mentioned. And I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.